Have you ever wondered why Doug Ratman, the person in the game series Portal, who survived GLaDOS's neurotoxin attack and makes all of the scrawlings on the wall to help the main character, is never anywhere to be physically found in the game? Well, if you do, I have an answer. I also have an answer to the question, will Shell return if they make a third game? I can guarantee the answer is no. The story begins on Black Friday of 2017. I was with my family at Walmart, looking through some of the video games. I mostly just saw new stuff like Madden 18 or Battlefield 1. As I looked through games on the Xbox 360 rack, I saw something. It was Portal 2. I'd heard so much about the game and wanted to own a copy bad. I looked at its tag. It had the yellow tag which meant that it was only $10. We ended up getting the game as an early Christmas present. Me and my sister Chloe immediately started it up and played through a bit of the co-op. It was fun, and I wish it would have never ended. Eventually, she got tired of the game, so I was left with no other choice but to play the single player. I got hooked onto the single player instantly, right at the start with the relaxation vault being lit and well kept. As I continued through the story, up until test chamber 4 of the courtesy call, everything went normally. But then, I decided to start exploring. I saw a little opening in the wall after falling onto the glass, and went through it thinking that this was the right way. But instead, it led me to an office with weird scrawlings on the wall. Most of it was unreadable, but one part was very clear. In red paint, the word, unreason, was written. This was freaky to me. I decided to look up what this was. After scrolling through some things, I came to the conclusion that this was one of the rat dens in the game. For those of you who are like me, and don't know what the rat dens are, they're rooms with markings on the wall, cans of paint and beans and some even with radios or messy beds. So, I went through the game looking for more. After three more dens, I started to see a bit of a pattern to where they were. It seemed that each chapter, except for the courtesy call, had at least two dens, but in chapter two, something weird happened. I was in the last test before the end of the chapter, when I somehow found a way into another den. It was odd, as I thought that chapter 2 only had two of these, but this one was different. Instead of the normal tiny office room that they normally were, this one was a long hallway. There were no beans, paint cans or beds on the floor like the others had. On the walls though, it looked like any other den, it had a bunch of scrawlings on the walls just like the others. Instead of most of the scrawlings being unreadable, these ones were clear. On one wall, it was, the cake is a lie, over and over, endlessly it seemed, as I couldn't see the end of the hallway. On the other, it was something that I only realised after looking up. The entire Labrack comic published by Valve. I tried to save the game at this spot, but it didn't work, which I found kind of odd as it normally auto-saves every time you find one of these dens. I knew this one wasn't supposed to be in the game. It seemed as if the game was trying to tell me something. So, I finally got up enough courage to walk down the hallway. The same things kept coming, the left wall having the cake is a lie, and the right displaying the rest of Lab Rat. This kept happening for a solid hour. The comics kept coming in order, and the cape kept being a lie with every step. After the last page of the comic happened, the hallway went pitch black. This made me freak out, as I was playing this game in the middle of the night. Then a light appeared at the beginning of the end of the hallway. This really made me freak out, as I knew there was only one other thing that could be producing that kind of light. I walked to it, and as I got closer, what I feared was a reality. It was an incinerator. I knew that something was wrong now. I've seen playthroughs of the game, 
and not one person has featured this room, or an incinerator. I've even read on one site that Valve had gotten rid of the mechanic for Paul too. So the fact that there was one in this room, that I don't even think should be here, was shocking. I walked forward, and behind the incinerator was one final message. I can only assume that it was from Doug Ratman. Well, you have found this secret den. So secret, even the devs don't know it exists. So now that you have found this place, I will reveal why you never see me. The truth is, I jumped into this very incinerator once GLaDOS came back online. I was scared, and I couldn't go through this. Not again. So now, I give you a choice, Alex. Will you follow me, or continue your fight? This blew my mind, and it nearly made my heart stop. I can't believe that this game, this Doug Ratman, knew my real name. I didn't even notice right away that before Shell, there were two buttons displayed on the screen, with two choices beside them. The first was X, and it was to continue the game. The other was Y and it was to commit suicide. I tried to turn off my Xbox so I didn't have to make this choice, but it wouldn't turn off. I changed the output to TV, but the game still displayed. I eventually ran upstairs to watch Netflix, but then the game flicked onto my screen the second it came on. It even displayed on my phone when I tried to look at it. I had to make the choice. While I wanted to continue the game, and get rid of this glitch or hidden area or something. A part of me said, kill Shell. A part of me overcame, and I clicked Y. Shell jumped into the incinerator without hesitation. I was falling to the bottom. Before the game cuts black, the song that was supposed to be used for an alternate ending before it was scrapped, Exile Vilify, was playing as the following things burned with Shell. A cake, a weighted companion cube, the cause from the last game, and most disturbing of all, Doug Ratman in a polygon form. The screen cuts black and the credits rolled. It was at this point that I realised that the ending I had heard of where Shell suffocated in space, the one that got scrapped, was as much of a lie as the cake. This was the scrapped ending. How do I know? After the final screen, Exile Vilify still playing in a continuous loop was a series of text. It was Doug's most famous line followed by in loving memory at the bottom with his picture from Lab Rat. The quote was, Reality is the story the mind tells itself, an artificial structure conjured into being by the calcium ion exchange of a million synaptic firings. A truth so bizarre, they can only be lied into existence, and our minds can lie. Never doubt that. I've never left that screen since. Thank you for listening to the end. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button, and if you haven't already, Make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to make sure you never miss a story.